everybody. Today I will switch things up a bit. I recently acquired a new mechanical keyboard. This is my first time using one. This is the Lulu mechanical keyboard from boardswords.xyz. Um, and I had a pretty rough time flashing the keyboard for the first time. So yeah, I decided to share a video and just share my experience, maybe to help others. I'm gonna go over how to configure the keyboard, how to boot it, how to um, uh, configure the LEDs, and how to configure some custom bindings to switch between layers. And yeah, just get the most out of your keyboard. Okay, first off, I want to begin this uh, tutorial with a disclaimer. I'm not stating that Board Source has a bad guide for flashing your little keyboard. That was my material for this guide. I used their FAQ, their guide, and their product to flash the keyboard. In this video, we're gonna go over how to flash the Lulu keyboard using PEG KMK. This is a product that Board Source developed. So it's not like they just give you a keyboard and leave you out just stranded. It's just that some of their concepts are a little bit advanced for a first timer like me. And I was very unfamiliar with a lot of the terms. It was a little bit intimidating and a little bit frustrating. So again, the reason for doing this video is just making that experience smoother for other people. I'm gonna leave in the, in the video notes a lot of links for the um, uh, FAQ, the product peg KMK, which is, again, what we are going to use to flash the Lulu keyboard. I have already downloaded um, the app and this is what we're gonna do. In the right here, you can see it's for the key map, the LED and the old, all in, we're gonna do that in a future video, but yeah, for this one, we're gonna focus on the key map and the LED customization. Okay, so the first important thing that you have to know is to start flashing your keyboard. You must not have the two sides connected. Disconnect them. Do not use the TR TRRS cable for this. Just connect the USB-C port to the left one. Always start with the left one. Nothing bad happens if you start with the right one, but I had some unexpected events, so just, just be mindful. Connect the left one and see what happens. If, when you connect your keyboard, you see this drive that's appearing on the top right corner of my desktop, then you're good to go and you can skip to the next section. If, on the other hand, you connect your keyboard and you do not see a drive appear, uh, don't worry, all good, nothing is bad with your keyboard. It's just that we need to boot it so the computer can recognize it and we can configure it with the help of some resources that board source provides. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna set our keyboards in boot mode. Setting the keyboard in boot mode is very easy. You just need to slide a switch on the back of your PCB. So just flip it around and there's a switch. You just need to slide it until uh, you will see the silhouette of the switch on the back. Now you might be wondering why I am inserting this tool on the back. This is because I built my keyboard before trying to configure it. Unfortunately, the back part of the keyboard, I could screw it in, but I couldn't screw it off when I was trying to set it in boot mode. I don't know what happened with the screws, but they're basically there for good and I don't want to damage my keyboard. Luckily, I could use this tool provided by a board source not only to screw the keyboard in, but also to uh, conveniently slide the switch on and off. Find the same switch on the other keyboard and repeat the same process. Now let's connect the left part of the keyboard. On your desktop, you should be seeing an image like this, a drive with a weird name. Before doing anything else, we will switch this keyboard back to, um, let's call it default mode. So out of boot mode, this is just um, switching the dial back to where it was. We do this while the keyboard is connected. Now that this is ready, nothing should have changed. Switching the switch back from boot mode should not change anything in your drive. Your mount should still be there. And we can now grab the left side configuration file. These are both um, obtained from the Lulu FAQ. I'll link this in the video notes. 
but you will just drag the left configuration file just onto the drive. So just drag and drop it or copy paste it and it will take some time. But eventually the file transfer will be over. In this case, I got an error saying the operation could be completed. Don't freak out. This error happens sometimes. Others, the amount will just disappear. No worries about that. Just disconnect, reconnect your keyboard. And when it's connected, you will see now you have a different thing. It says Lulu and L meaning it's the left side of the keyboard. Now we're ready to configure this with PEG. Also, when you open PEG, it will recognize the keyboard. Had you tried this before the mount appears on your desktop, nothing would have happened with PEG. So let's eject this side of the keyboard and repeat the same step. I'm going to skip it over in the video, but pretty much you do the same for the right side. Before moving on, I did want to share here as an example. When the transfer was done here, there was no error. The mount just disappeared. I just unplugged and plugged back the keyboard. And here we have the Lulu R for my right side. And Peg is also recognizing this part of the keyboard. We're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, now let's go to the part where we actually configure the keyboard, where we assign uh, values to the keys. And we also change the LEDs. Now, all of these, we're going to do it with the um, application that I already mentioned from board source. This is PEG. It runs on KMK. Now, notice where I started configuring Lulu L. Here, my keyboard is also not connected. The two halves are not connected. I just connected the left part, and that's where you should start. We can bind all of the key maps here, even for the right side, just by configuring this for the left side. Other functions like the LED configuration do require it to that you then connect the right side, but again, the application will warn you that and will suggest that. Now for the key maps, which we're going to do first, let's do it. So right now, this is the, um, well, kind of the default uh, key map that you have. I have already changed some of the parts. So for those of you that are Mac users, uh, L GUI, this is the command key, control and alt, well, this is just, uh, Alt is option in Mac and control, well, that stands for both Windows and, and Mac. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much all that you used to. Now notice that, for example, here we don't have the arrow keys. That's because we don't have enough keys to bind all of the values. And that's why we have different layers. You will basically click on a key and either, depending on how you want it, you hold it down and that will toggle another layer or you can just tap a key and that will change the layer without you having to hold it down. I have it with the other configuration where you have to hold it down, which is this MO where it says momentarily activates layer and switches off when you let go. How do you know which layer? That's the number between parentheses. So this will toggle on the layer one, which here on the right corner, you can see there's layers. So here's where you have the layer down here. We have left, down, right, up. These TRNS is just it's not configured, so notice the description uses the next lowest non-transparent key. So it will go back to layer zero and use the, for example, here we'll use the O for this one here. We have the F keys here, which are actually not that important in Mac. You can switch them to use the, the audio, media keys, other stuff. I have not bind those yet. And we have other keys like the backslash or other stuff that's not configured that you cannot use here. Um, how do you get these keys, by the way? So here's the sections. You can configure other stuff with LEDs and whatever. Modifiers. And here you have layer keys. So notice here, this MO, this is the one that momentarily changes. And this is the one that activates and deactivates. So this is the one that if I wanted to, I just switch my MO for the TO. And that's the one where you, when you click on that key, it will change the layer without you having to hold down the key. So I will actually change this R GUI to be, to change to layer two, we will use this later. And now when you're happy with your configuration, you just click on save map and that's it. And it says you can unplug and nothing changed. Now let's go to the, that, that's it for the key maps is not really that complex. And um, the right and left side configuration already come with some uh, configuration that's in my opinion pretty handy i had to just make a couple of changes for example the spacebar and the enter were 
um, reversed, but I'm more comfortable having my spacebar on the left side and the enter on the uh, right. Same for the backspace, I prefer it here. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much that, not that complex. Okay, moving on. So now the LED, again, I have configured my left side. And for now, there, there's two things here. The layer, which is the, this is the light that will shine below your keyboard. So there's all of these LEDs and you have your layers here. So this is just for each key map. Now, notice what will happen when I change here this to, let's say red. So I will apply it and it says single key changes can only be made in a pro account. It was a really fast message. Let me toggle that again. How do you log into your pro account? Well, if you bought your keyboard from Lulu, from board source, I mean, from board source.xyz, they will immediately assign you a pro account. So you will have to enter your uh, board source account here, your email and password. Let's go to their website. There you have the order of the Lulu keyboard I bought. If, if like me, by the way, you purchase your keyboard as a guest, which it happened, uh, you can go to my orders, actually, and submit a ticket. And basically, you tap here, missing order on your account. You can give your order ID that's present in the receipt you sent um, in the receipt you get when you bought your keyboard. And, and yeah, it would say find the link. And for me, it did it automatically. What didn't happen automatically was this peg true. This is your pro account. So it said false. I submitted a ticket for that. And in a matter of hours, if not one day, I don't remember, this was switched to true. Going back to PEG, I already entered my credentials here. And now I have the pro license. So now I can change the, um, the color of a single key and it will let me map it. Now I don't want to do that. I would prefer all of my key having this color, but okay, you can just apply to all. Now I will save my key map. The important thing here and why I told you we have to start it this way with the left side is when you save your map, it will prompt you to connect the other um, keyboard, right? The other half. Had you started with the right, the key map there won't be present. So if you save your LED for the right, that will also save your key map. It will prompt you to connect the left one and it will uh, save that one. That will override your previous configuration and it's a mess. By the way, if at any point configuring with PEG, something goes very wrong, maybe you don't like your configuration, maybe it's too crazy, just go back to the first step where you boot your keyboard and you drag the configuration files provided at board source and nothing will happen. You will just, again, nothing is irreversible. You will just boot them, drag the files again, and everything will be back to normal and you can start your configuration again. So here I will save my map and notice that here it will tell you for split LED flashing, you need to unplug the main side of your keyboard. So let's do that. We're gonna eject it. It says it loves connection. I don't see my keyboard flashing anymore. I will connect my right side. And after some time, it just says done. The flashing is already there. I'll show a picture right now on screen of the bottom of my keyboard. And yeah, we're pretty much done with the LED flashing. If we wanted to, we could connect our keyboard already to our computer and start using it. One thing that got me when I got my Lulu keyboard was the cable that connects the two halves. So this is the TRRS cable. I really didn't know what it was, but there's a clear difference. It looks like the auxiliary cable with two male halves. Now be careful with that. So this is the auxiliary. Here, this one won't work. Why? Notice the two rings. So that's a clear tail. This is not the cable that will work. Instead, let me show you the difference. Let's keep this as a reference. And this is the TRS cable that you want. So clear tail again, you have the three circles here. You plug in each end to the keyboard and it will work. Let's go to see how it looks on the keyboard and how you can tell that the connection actually works between the keyboards and then to the computer. Remember the order is important. You first connect the keyboards and then the Lulu keyboard to the computer. One more thing that I want to do as part of this video is adding custom codes. 
So originally this channel was intended purpose was iOS. So let's make a custom key that will help us in our iOS development. So what you can do is actually add code when you tap on a single key. So in this instance, we have this custom code where when we type on the key, we will write a string, right? So what I want to do is add a V stack. I, will, I want to just tap one key and after that, I will print out the structure for a V stack, at least the initial part, like the skeleton. So let's do that. We can do this through peg, through pegs UI or through a JSON um, struct that we will send. So let's try doing it through the JSON. Put it here and instead of sending the string test, let's send the stack and let's open brace. And because we're typing it, we don't need to type the closing brace because uh, Xcode will do it automatically. Again, I have my left side connected, uh, peg and borzor sometimes referred to it as main. So I have the main side connected. I'll go to custom key codes and here you can either type it out with the label string sent or using the JSON, which is what we did. So I'm gonna copy paste it. And I just click on import key. Now, once I go back, I can see that my V stack is here. I can delete it or I can delete it if I don't want to use it. But for now, let's use it. I, I remapped my keyboard. So what I had here will switch to the layer three. And I want the V stack. So here's where the V is in my keyboard. I wanted that when I tap here, that's what happens. So let's go to custom codes. Here is my V stack. I'll go here, save my map. It. Now let's try it out. Okay, so now that we have everything custom set up, I'm gonna press the button to activate the fourth layer. If you have the default OLED, you will see that this is a change. And here we have the value. So let's see, I'm gonna do this, but with Xcode. Now let's go inside this H stack and see if it works. So right now I have my cursor there gonna tap the fourth layer, tap B stack here, let's check out, and there we have it. That was all for today. Hope my walkthrough helped some of you first timers with mechanical keyboard flashing, the configuration, and yeah, I hope I can save you some time and some frustration or headaches that I had during my first time. Hope you liked the video. Bye!